Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 9 on Fargo CW. Holy crap, they tricked us good on this place because the, the managers and everything were super nice and tell after, like, after you sign the lease. Imagine you finally find the perfect apartment after months of searching. You sign your lease, move in, and what do you know? You find a small army of cockroaches crawling across your floor. But what can you do now? Is it too late to get out of your lease? Valley News Team's Natalie Parsons spoke to an area woman who's living through this nightmare and is sharing her story so you know tenants have more rights than you'd expect. Like now you look at my phone and literally over like all the pictures are of bugs, like bugs, dead bugs that I have to take pictures of because I'm trying to like get out of this place. Nancy Klobuchar, her husband and two year old daughter moved into this apartment October 1st and within days of the move, these creepy crawlers made their appearance known in the cabinets, on the floor, behind the stove, everywhere. October 18th came and she wrote her apartment a letter saying they've had enough and her family wanted out of the lease. You would want to solve the, the bug problem so it doesn't spread to other apartments and then so you don't have to pay an exterminator to come here every month and you know mask the problem. I don't get why they wouldn't want to have a clean building. Thanks to the conditions in her lease, it would cost her hundreds of dollars to leave. But she knew this infestation was a problem long before her family moved in and felt that it shouldn't cost her. So Klobuchar went to the city of Fargo multiple times and got the help she needed from a housing inspector. And he went down to the office and the next day the maintenance guy was here fixing all that stuff. And then the day after that we got released from our lease. That was November 8th. Klobuchar says her apartment management had to have been aware of the situation before she moved in because other tenants she spoke to have the same thing. She also says her search for a new apartment has changed since the last time around. You know, look at every crack. Take the, friger the refrigerator off, you know, from behind the wall and make sure the, you know, cupboard next to it isn't rotting like ours is. And just little things I never thought I would have to pay attention or worry about. Klobuchar says the biggest takeaway she had from this disastrous situation is that looks can be deceiving and it's better to be safe than sorry. Natalie Parsons, Valley News Live. For more information on your rights as an apartment tenant, head over to valleynewslive.com and click on this story. And if you need help uncovering fraud and corruption in your community, call our whistleblower hotline at 701-237-6576 and leave your tip. A member of our investigative team will get on the case and go to work to expose the truth. Taking a look at weather, here's a look at our tower cam time lapse for today. We have mostly sunny skies and still we have... Uh, the uh, sunshine really getting us up there in terms of temperatures along with a southerly flow that uh, got us well into the 60s across the area again today. And with the mainly clear skies, temperatures are falling now at 48 degrees at Fargo and Grand Forks. Uh, or Moorhead holding at 48 and Grand Forks holding at 45 degrees with uh, mainly clear skies out there. And uh, other temperatures show 41 Valley City, Devils Lake 45, Jamestown Lanes and 44 at Thief River Falls and Fergus Falls holding at 48 degrees. The winds have flipped around to more of a north northwesterly direction at the surface, mainly between 10 and 20 miles per hour. So the satellite loop showing we have mainly clear skies out there right now. That was the story today. We saw a few passing clouds, but that's basically it. High pressure is approaching us and is about to crest over us. We did have a slight cold front move through as we went through the overnight period, but as this high pressure moves off to the east, we are going to stay warm with a southerly flow. Another pretty dry cold front is going to work its way through as we go through the early week period coming up. So as we track it through time, we're going to keep that northwesterly flow. Temperatures will uh, see their lows into the upper 30s to near 40 tonight and then for the day on Monday more of a southerly flow. Temperatures are going to get up there into the lower 50s as we're going to keep partly cloudy skies as we go through this evening and then for the day on Tuesday we should warm it up even further as we'll keep mainly sunny skies and temperatures will top off into the mid 50s in most places. Now as we go through the day on Wednesday we've got partly cloudy skies 54 48 Thursday with a chance of some 
some rain and some areas could see some significant snow as we go through the day on Friday. 37 year high here in Fargo and it will be a little windy. And then 31 on Saturday and Sunday as mostly cloudy skies turn partly cloudy. So tonight is the super moon and we actually got some uh, pictures out there um, uh, across the area and we're going to read off some of these names. This one is from Amber. And uh, we're going to flip through these uh, right now, if we can. Thank you to uh, Tracy Hayes from Bear Paw Resort. Uh, another one from Tracy Hayes. Just uh, getting that moon on the horizon. This one is Alicia Marie uh, Photography. She gives us a lot of great photos. And let's see what else we got over here. This one is Robert. Thank you for this one. As we go through the overnight period, we will see the moon uh, make its way through a super moon. And the best time to view will be just before sunrise when it is about to set on the horizon. Okay, Justin, thank you so much. Yep, thank you. And a press conference today, David Singleton with the Minnesota Community Policing Services said 45-year-old Michelle Newell was last seen or heard from on August 28th and they've received leads and tips that have led them to believe they will eventually find her body in North Dakota. They've linked her death to Timothy Barr from Lakeville, Minnesota. He was charged with one count of second degree murder and one count of vehicular homicide, but those charges have been dismissed temporarily as the police try to figure out where she was killed and where her body is. It's an exhausting process, uh, both uh, mentally and physically, um, because, you know, essentially what we're doing is, you know, we're looking for somebody who's deceased. And when you come across something like that, I mean, that isn't the most pleasant thing that, uh, you know, that you can uh, look at. But we feel like that it needs to be done for the family. Investigators are asking people with barns or out, outbuildings on their property to check for anything unusual. You can also tell police about any buildings you believe should be checked. Fargo police are searching for a stolen construction vehicle that damaged a power pole. Authorities say a GLG telehandler, excuse me, a JLG telehandler was stolen from 1213 MP Avenue North. The suspect drove the vehicle and scraped up the roadway and curb and later smashed into a utility pole in the 700 block of 10th Street North. The suspect left the scene in the vehicle and drove it to an unknown location. Crews are working on replacing the pole, which is expected to take most of the day into the evening. Fargo police say they are still searching for the vehicle. As protests continue across the country, President-elect Donald Trump has made two major White House staff picks late this afternoon. Hillary Clinton, meanwhile, has reached out to donors, blaming her loss on FBI Director James Comey's latest investigation of her private email server less than two weeks before the election. Gen Jennifer Johnson has our story from Washington. After days holed up at Trump Tower, the president-elect has made his first big cabinet decision, picking Republican exit, National Committee Chair Reince Priebus as White House Chief of Staff. Seen, but, you know. Donald Trump has got to go! The decision coming as protests continue from Hollywood to New York City. Thousands of angry Americans still voicing their opposition to president-elect Donald Trump. I've never seen an election like this one before. Uh, where people are so fearful. But Republican leaders say anti-Trump Americans should rest assured. People um, should put their minds at ease. We're going to get to work on solving the big country's problems, getting this economy growing, fixing our national security, you know, fixing our health care problems. Hillary Clinton spoke to top donors, blaming her loss on FBI Director James Comey's decision to reopen her email investigation 11 days before the election. Clinton told donors, our analysis is that Comey's letter raising doubts that were groundless, baseless, proven to be, stopped our momentum. Trump's team isn't buying that analysis. I just can't believe it's always somebody else's fault. Sometimes you just have to take a look in the mirror and reflect on what went wrong. Conway, who met up with the president-elect of Trump Tower just hours before the previous announcement, says more cabinet picks will be coming soon. Jennifer Johnson, NBC News, Washington. Trump has also named former campaign CEO Steve Bannon, his chief strategist and senior counselor, as the president-elect readies his team for the White House. President-elect Donald Trump frequently links his campaign to the Brexit movement, and Saturday, one of the leaders of that movement showed up at Trump Tower in New York City.
Nigel Farage, the head of the Leave movement that won Britain's vote to exit the European, European Union, was spotted in the lobby at Trump headquarters, and although he said he was there as a tourist, he was allowed to go up. Today's visit would make Farage the first British politician to meet with Mr. Trump since his victory. Two weeks ago, we showed you how some phenomenal athletes were training hard for Fargo Mania. The big day is finally here, and this adaptive competition took place at TNT Fitness. Fargo Mania is our area's first CrossFit training and competition for people with disabilities aged 18 and up. Dozens of athletes showed off just how much their months of training has paid off. I would like to do more squats because um, I've been learning those um, a lot lately and I've been doing it at home every time and I think it's more fun to be here. And yes, NDSU Bison football players were there helping and cheering on those competing in today's Fargo Mania. Still ahead, we've got some tech tips to make your holiday travel plans a little easier.